Today I'm going to demonstrate my EOV KT200 combination curve tracer and ESR meter. It came as a kit and is made in Germany. It cost me approximately $85. I'm going to focus on the curve tracer component tester function in this video. You can check out resistors, capacitors, inductors, diodes, transistors. Now this works best if you make out of circuit tests but it can also be used to make some in circuit tests. In circuit testing is trickier because of the shunt effect of the circuit being tested. So I'm going to start with the uh, just basics here now. And what you're seeing here is a, a straight horizontal line and that means it's an open. And when I short the leads together it's showing a short. Now that you have the ver you'll have a vertical line straight up and down. I'm going to go ahead and try out some different resistors now and potentiometers. Okay, I've got some resistors here and they're 100 ohms, 1000 ohms, 10,000 ohms and 100,000 ohms. I'm going to start out with the 100 ohms you see it's pretty it's almost vertical and as I said earlier if it's completely vertical it's a dead short so as your resistance increases it's excuse me as your resistance decreases it's going to get more vertical so now one K okay. 1000 ohms uh, it's got a little bit more of a slant to it. Now we'll try the 10,000 ohms. Oh, slant's getting even larger. And last we will try the 100,000 ohms. And as you can see, it's almost horizontal. Here is a potentiometer I've got hooked up. And I'm going to go ahead and change the resistance now. You can see as I turn here in a counterclockwise direction, the resistance is getting larger. It also only goes that far, which tells me that this potentiometer is not very high value. It's probably, I don't know, looks like 2.5K or 5K or something. Also, if you had a problem, say, with the potentiometer, you were working on something and you didn't know if it was smooth in all areas, you could check it out like this too. See where there's any dead spots. Here's the volume control that I got out of an old boom box. As far as I remember, one of these was bad. Um, I, I kept it anyways because I might be able to use the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and check this out now. Bye. Okay. I'll check the other, check the other side. I'm changing my leads. Okay, this does nothing, so this is definitely bad. I'm going to do out of circuit testing of a silicon diode, a germanium diode, a xeno diode, and the LED. Uh, like I said earlier, the straight horizontal line indicates an open and the straight vertical line indicates a short and like I say if you have leakage it'll be indicated by a slanted line so let me hook this up here now so as you can see I've got a, a right angle so that's what it's supposed to be 
showing. If you see something like this, you can assume that it's uh, good. The germanium diode comes next. I'm just hooking these up now in the old way. That was, I believe, a 1N34. Now a Zener diode. I think it's like a 5.5 volt or something. That's exactly how a Zener diode is supposed to look. You see if it has like a little, has like a little, here a little knee bend like that. And last we'll take a look at an LED. Here's the LED and that looks good too. You can see this horizontal line is longer because the LED takes a higher has a higher turn on voltage. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate like a simple shunting effect. As you can see here, I've uh, put a 100,000 ohm resistor in parallel with the diode. And here's what happens when I connect the other test lead. It looks like it's not really a 90 degree, a 90 degree angle anymore. You might think that it's leaking or something. The diode is leaking, so you, what you have to do then is is basically disconnect one end of the diode or remove it and check it out of circuit. So the leakage is going to be indicated by a slanted line. So here's uh, here it is again without the diode hooked up. Now I have a, looks like a 1000 ohm resistor in parallel with the diode. And as you can see, it looks like, it almost looks like a, a short because of the shunting effect because of the resistance here is in parallel with the diode. So again, like I said, you're going to have to like, Disconnect one end of the diode and then check it again. Now here's see here's what happens when I uh, release one end of the resistor and just measure the diode. It looks normal again. This is a 100 ohm resistor in parallel with the diode. It, as you can see, it looks almost like a, a dead short. Normally you're not going to run into, you're not going to have that low res resistances shunting the uh, junctions, the junctions here of your semiconductor, maybe except for like in power supplies. So again, what you have to do is disconnect one end and then measure it again. And then it'll look like that if it's okay. Now to the transistors. I have a good power transistor hooked up between the emitter and the base and you can see what the waveform right there looks like. Now I'm going to hook up a bad power transistor between the emitter and the base. I definitely know this one is bad because I had replaced it. It came out of a Technics a stereo receiver. And you can you can see that waveform is like completely completely off. You got a slant there which indicates like high leakage. Now I have the leads hooked up to the good transistor between the base and emitter and it'll look like that. It'll be like uh, basically uh, a right angle. See what happens when I reverse the leads. 
same thing so we can say that's correct and now I'll go ahead and do between the emitter and the base that's how that should look too it'll be really horizontal and I'm going to go ahead and turn the leads around that seems to be okay now back to the bad transistor uh, let's go ahead and check between the we'll just go ahead and check between the collector and the emitter that is a dead short now we'll go ahead and check between the emitter and the base that doesn't look good and between the base and the emitter that doesn't look good either so this one is definitely bad now I have a small signal transistor hooked up uh, like I said if the vertical part of the waveform is tilted then the transistor is bad because ideally the resistance of a forward base junction should be zero so like if it's in circuit no amount of uh, external resistance from a circuit is going to go ahead and increase the zero resistance it's kind of like having two resistors in parallel the total resistance is going to be less than the lowest resistance in this case the lowest resistance is going to, like, going to be a short so now how do you determine the terminals if you don't know what's what okay I actually know what this is but just for the sake of demonstration I'm going to go ahead and act like I don't know so what I'll do is just hook up like the I hook up the leads just to the terminals in any which way and once I get a waveform that looks like this with the little knee, knee bend in there all oh, this thing shut itself off it's got auto shut off and I got it I'm gonna to have to turn that off that's irky see that little knee right there that basically that's gonna tell me I have the emitter base junction right there the emitter base terminals and the other one of course is only one more terminal left one more pin left on a transistor is going to be the on a regular bipolar transistor is going to be the collector this right here so now if I have for example if I measure from the base to the collector I'm going to have that right there this it's going to be I'm going to have like a basically a right angle again and you'll see like the vertical line goes all the way up and if I have measured from the collector to the emitter right here you see the vertical right here it doesn't go up that much right there so that that's going to tell me right there that is since I know the metals the collector and I know this is going to be the emitter then because this does, this does have a lot of resistance between the collector and the emitter and here between the collector and the base on the right here side it doesn't have so much and that's how that should look Now here's what I meant about doing in-circuit tests and for example checking out transistors and diodes. I've opened up a boom box and I'm going to show you like the effect of what happens if uh, some, something is uh, shunted there with the for example with the transistor. This transistor is actually good because everything is okay with this boom box except for the cassette mechanism. So just for the sake of demonstration here, I'm going to check between the collector and the emitter. And 
let me uh, try to focus that. See, I get what's shown almost like a dead, a dead short between the collector and the emitter, and, and that's not right. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with this transistor. So, what you'd have to do is, like, like I said, unsolder, unsolder the leads, um, or go ahead and re remove the transistor. I'm going to do another one with uh, another test with the diode now. Now I'm going to test one of these rectifier diodes in the power supply of this Sharp GF9191 and show what the waveform then, the in-circuit waveform looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and check this diode right there where I've got my leads on. And I'll show you here in a second what the waveform looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and collect the leads and we'll look at the waveform, see what happens. See that waveform there? It looks really weird. You might think there's something wrong with this diode, but actually there's nothing wrong with it. So again, you'd have to like disconnect one of the leads or go ahead and unsolder it uh, completely. Now back to that transistor here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, measure between the base and the emitter this time. Let's take a look at the waveform once I connect the leads. So that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So I can assume that this, that the junction of this transistor is good. If you see something like this and it looks like it's supposed to, you can say, well, it's good. But if you see something that you think might be bad, you're definitely going to go ahead and have to double check that by disconnecting the leads or taking it out of the circuit because that might really throw you off. So again, what I mean to say is what's, what looks good is good and what looks bad definitely needs to be double checked. 